I, Bentley Trammell, take you, Estella, to be my wife. I promise to be true to you in good times and in bad, in sickness and in health. I will love you and honor you all the days of my life. Take you, Bentley Drummond, to be my lawfully wedded husband, to have and to hold from this day forward, for better and for worse, for richer and for poorer, in sickness and in health, until death do us part. Infantum could make of both these names nothing, nothing longer, longer or, or more, more explicit, explicit than Pip. Pip. So I called myself Pip and came to be called Pip. Chap, let's get ready for the Christmas dinner. And don't mind what your sister says. You already know that she governs this house. But you also know that I'm always there. I know that, Uncle Joe. Come on now. Let's get ready. Thank you, thank you. Oh, yes, that's not. Oh, 
Oh. What are you doing? Be careful. Be grateful, boy, to them who have brought you up by hand. Why is it that the young are never grateful? Ah. They are wishes. So? If this boy is not grateful this night, he never will be. It's only to be hoped that this orphan will be pampered. But I have my fear. I fear if she will like him. She who? Miss Havisham. Miss Havisham? The one who lives uptown. If there is any Miss Havisham downtown. Miss Havisham, that immensely rich lady, the one who lives in a large, dismal house. But I have heard that she lives a life of seclusion. Oh, she wants this boy to go and play there, and of course he is going, and he better play there. I wonder how she came to know of people. For that, we need to thank Uncle Pumble, too, who let my orphan brother make fortune by going to Miss Havisham. Be grateful, boy, to them who have brought you up by hand. Right, Mrs. Jones? Yes. Please have something. Please, oh, yeah. please. please. Yeah. Do I have Christmas carols? Perhaps. If I wasn't a blacksmith's wife and didn't have the responsibility of my orphan brother, I would have heard them too. God bless you, old chap. You will be fine. Boy. Be always grateful to all the friends, but especially unto them who have brought you up ahead. Come on, let's go. We will see Miss Havisham tomorrow. And let me tell you about her. Be a gentleman in, in front of her. And don't yeah. be a friend. Yeah. Hey. Thanks. <laughs> yeah. Cheers, cheers. Cheers. Yes. <laughs> Mm. So fizzy.
Never seen the sun since you. No, ma'am. Do you know? Do you know what I touch here? Yes, ma'am. What do I touch? Your heart, ma'am. Broken. Diversion. And I'm done with men and women. Play. Play. I sometimes have sick fences. And I have sick fence that I want to see some play. There. There. Play there. I want to see some play. Play. No, ma'am. I, I am very sorry for you. I am very sorry. I can't play now. If you complain of me, I, I shall get into trouble with my sister. So I would do it if I could. But it's a new here and so strange. Many hard things about you, but you say nothing of him. What do you think of her? I think she is very proud. Anything else? I think she is very pretty. Anything else? I think she is very insulting. Anything else? I think. I should like to go home and never see again. Oh, she is so pretty. I am not sure that I should not like to see again. But I should like to go home now. You shall go soon. But come again after six days. Yes, ma'am. Stella. Take him downstairs and let him have something to eat. Come with me. So, 
You think I'm pretty? Yes. I think you are very pretty. Am I insulting? Not so much now. What do you think of me now? I shall not tell you. Come here. You may kiss me if you like. You are the common labor boy. I shall see you after six days. You made me cry. I can make you cry whenever I want. You are so cruel. And you are so poor. So you deserve to cry. Disgusted. Well, that's a pity for you, isn't it? I know that if I was half as fond of you as I'm of her, life would have been simpler. Then why don't you make it simpler? Why do you want to live in such agony? Why don't you listen to your heart, Pip? Why is your spirit wandering? Let my body be where it would, but my spirit was wandering, always wandering about her. Biddy, why are you crying, Biddy? You will never find an hour's happiness in your society. She's so rich, Pip. So unreal. I am real, Pip. Right here, right in front of you. And yet, your heart keeps wandering about her all day long. She makes use of you, Pip, to tease another man. She uses you, Pip. She uses you. Why, why are you so angry, Biddy? I am not angry, Pip. How could I ever be angry at you? 
It's just that... What? What is it? I can't... I cannot see you like this, Pip. Wasting your life on your... I can never see you hurt, Pip. And I can never see you cry. Never, Pip. Never. I know, Biddy. You're right for me. You're like a new dog. Yet, I fear that my admiration for her is stronger than any logic that could be. Don't you love me, Pip? I love you, Biddy. But I love her more. I know she will destroy me. I know she will break my heart. And I know those pieces will never be mended again. But I will love her against peace, against promise, against hope, against happiness, and against all discouragements that could be. Then I shall let you go. Your admiration for her is consuming. And it will destroy you, Pip. I fear that it will break you. And I fear that you'll never be the same. She's already changed you so much. You wish to be a gentleman for her sake. And you're blind towards what is in front of you. And although I'm letting you go, but my heart sinks at the thought of Estella. She will break you, Pip. And I won't be there to help you then. I won't be there to help you.
don't mean to be rude. But it still is very proud. Oh, you are so innocent, my boy. There must be something. She's pretty. I like her. That's all for today. Come off to six days. Yes, ma'am. Next week, when I will come, I won't let you in. Be safe. stronger it will deal more deep love her love her love her because I adopted her to be loved I bred her and educated her to be loved I developed her into what she has become her heart and put a rock there so that she would never love him she would never love him never 
She would never love Billy. Never. She would never love Billy. She was reared. I took her into my loving heart when it was first bleeding from its stats and where I have lavished years of tenderness upon her. But she's so proud. She's so proud. Who taught me to be proud? Who taught me to be rude? You! Yes, you! I have never forgotten the wrong starting. I have never forgotten that someone broke your heart. of my wedding. He left me broken. He left me broken. Someone is here to see Miss Havisham. He calls himself Bantley Drummond. Send him in. Good evening, Miss Havisham. And my love. Esther, I hear that you will attend the ball with Estella. Yes, Miss Havisham. I shall accompany Estella to the ball. You are to take me there. And bring me back if you will. Can you take me? Can I take you, Estella? Of course I can. You are to be my wife. And I can take you wherever you wish to. The day after tomorrow. 
If you please. And I must obey. But before that, I wish to speak to Miss Havisham. Please, excuse me, my love. Of course, Roman. I will take your leave. Go as you please. I must say that my wedding to Stella shall take place in London, not in Richmond, just weeks after the war. I agree. And she shall leave for London with me on the night of our wedding. I live quite pleasantly there, and I will take good care of Stella. I'm pleased to hear that. She will keep coming here to see you at certain intervals, as she may please. I hope so. And I will love her with passion. Like how the real love is. The blind devotion. The unquestionable self-humiliation. Utter submission. Trust and believe against yourself and against the whole world. Giving your whole heart and soul to the spirit. You speak of her as if you are the love. I have nothing to add, for I am inclined to answer you. She is to be my wife, and that's the thing. I believe it. It's very fine and dry. I will come here the after tomorrow to take his dinner to the boat, and she shall dine with me, if I have your permission. Very well.
what I am doing. What if you die, Mr. Rao? Rather good. You should be. See, Rada, I should not be. But I wish to enjoy this evening. Mr. Rao, did you see that fellow in the corner who was looking at you? Why should I look at you? What is there in that fellow that needs my attention? That is the very question I want to ask you. For he was hovering about you all night. Gods and all sorts of ugly creatures hover about the lighted candle. Can the candle help? No, but can't you help? Well, perhaps you should be foolish about this effect on you. It may have its effect on others, or maybe meant to have, but it's not worth discussing. Yes. It is because I cannot bear that people should say she throws away her graces and attentions on the lowest in the crowd. Don't be unreasonable. Don't be so proud, Estella. Don't you lie to me. I have seen you give him looks and smiles this very night, such as you never gave me. Do you want me to look at you that way to deceive and entrap you? You will deceive and trap him. Yes. And many others, all of them but you. Estella, when I fell into the mistake, I have so long remembered. At least say that you led me on. Yes, I led you on. Was that kind? Who am I? Who am I, for God's sake, that I should be kind? Estella. I understand that I shall never call you mine. But I still love you. I have loved you ever since I first saw you in that house. When you say you love me, I know what you mean. They are just words, nothing more. You address nothing in my heart. You touch nothing there. You know I feel nothing. I have tried to warn you of this. But why? Tell me why. Is it true that when the devil is pursuing you, it is quite true. You cannot love me, Estella. Everyone is willing to love me, but I don't love back. I tried to warn you. I'm not capable of love. You cannot marry him. I'm going to be married to him. Estella, you rest, Estella. Do not let Miss Havisham lead you to this fatal step. Put me aside, but bestow yourself on someone worthy, someone who loves you. Miss Havisham gives you to him as the greatest slight and injury that can be done to the many far better men, few who love you and who admire you. Among those few, there may be one who truly loves you, not as long and passionately that I have. Take him, I can. For your sake only. I can't do anything about it. Estella, even if I remain in England and could hold up my head up with the rest, how can I see you as Trevor's wife? Nonsense! This will pass in no time. Never, Estella. You have to get me out of your thoughts. I told you, I have no heart, no softness there. Sentiments. I have never bestowed my tenderness anywhere. I have never had any such thing. Out of my thoughts, you are part of my existence, part of my soul. You have been in every line and grace since I first saw you. The rough, common boy, whose poor heart you wounded even then. You have been in every prospect I've ever seen. On the river, on the marshes, in the darkness, in the light, in the sea, in the streets, you have been the embodiment of every graceful fancy that my mind has ever become acquainted with. Estella, to the last hour of my life, you remain part of me, part of good in me, part of the little evil in me. But in the separation, I associate you 
only with the Lord. You left me hurt and broken. In sharp business. Oh, God bless you. God must forgive you, Esther. Stella. 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 